Hi everyone. If you've seen the Celestian Plus Impulse Response video intro that we've done, this is the next part of the series. Uh, so if you've not seen the first part, you probably best go and watch that because I explain what an impulse response is, why it's useful, and the software that I'm using to make those do what I need them to do. So today we're going to look at clean tones and what speakers we'd use for clean tones and what mic positions we might use and why and maybe see if we can guide you down the right path to pick the sound that is best for you. So I'm going to cut the camera and I'm going to be at home while I do this because I'm going to just use the Audion ID4 to record the guitars and I'll be talking to you from there. Cut the camera now. Cut the camera. Cut the camera! Okay, uh, so this is a bit of a clean tutorial using the Celestian impulse responses. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at a kind of a completely clean tone and then a kind of not quite clean, almost bluesy kind of tone and experimenting with different cabinets. So that little intro that you heard there was a Celestian Alnico Blue through a 1x12 open back. Through We're running at 44.1k and 500 milliseconds. And I used the low gain all mics plus stereo room. And that, together, gives us a nice, simple, airy sound. Now, the amp on the left is Thermionics Black Verb, which I would imagine, from the name, is a Fender Twin Reverb Blackface. Which means that it basically will not distort on this channel, because this uh, has a single channel, and that's with the gain this high, and it sounds on my Les Paul on the neck pick up like this. And there is a little bit of reverb going on. I've got Slate Digital's Verb Suite Classics giving me a plate reverb, which goes <coughs> and also Echo Boy giving me a little bit of delay here. So I'm going to turn those off now so we can hear in a bit more detail how the cabinets affect the tone. It will be a little bit dry, but we're going to just have to live with that. So let's turn these off the mute and get rid and just go back to just... <laughs> Okay, so that's how an open back would sound. Um, most of this demo we're going to be doing is a single guitar in mono, but right at the end, I'm going to give you a couple of comparisons where I'm going to double track a guitar left and right, which is kind of what I would do in a mix. So the open back idea, that's a 1x12. So if we go to the same speaker, but with a 2x12, which is kind of the Vox AC30 type of setup, 500 millisecond, and go for the same impulse, but on a 2x12, that should be a little more kind of mid scooped and open. And I can hear, this is all the mics. This is the SM57421 and the Royal Ribbon and the room mic together. And that room mic seems to be making more of a difference on a 2x12 because it's giving more room response with that. Now let's just quickly move over and try a 4x12 with these same speakers. The only option for the 4x12 is the closed back. And that on the same impulse, which is the bottom one. That low end is really nice and full, but it's kind of, it's not as punchy in the mids anymore. Yeah, we can hear some more of that room going on, but let's switch now 
we'll go to the smallest closed back tiny little cabinet and we'll stick with just the SM57 on balance just because it's a single microphone and then I'll use the same microphone on a different cabinet. Okay, so this is the 1x12, still on Les Paul neck pickup. You hear that as I hit it, the transients are quite soft and the top is a little bit soft. Now let's move to the Celestian G12M greenback in the same cabinet, uh, sorry, closed, 1x12, so green back, uh, not cream back, green back, 1x12, we'll come to the cream backs in a minute, because they're a slightly different proposition, being a very much more modern kind of thing, so this, SM57 balanced, <laughs> So this is even more pushed in the kind of the mid range, which means that if I turn the reverb back on, this is almost a kind of a, a big jazz sound we should get. Yeah, so that's a closed back 1x12 with the Fender Twin Reverb. Now let's use a green back again, but we'll just open this up to... So the... Let's just think. So if we were to use a green, green back 2x12 open back, that's probably what would happen if you managed to jam two of these speakers into a Fender Twin Reverb. So let's use the SM57 in a balanced position again. Ooh. Here I've got a lot more low end going on here, a lot more fullness. And that mid that low mid range is really starting to compress. Now let's use exactly the same cabinet type, but now let's move over to the cream back. So let's move over to the Creamback M. The Creamback M is pretty much designed to be tonally like the Greenback, but with newer, more modern materials that don't saturate, that don't uh, kind of soften off like you would find, which means that you get a 65 watt handling instead of 25, which in the virtual world doesn't make the difference, but the tone should be quite different. So now I've picked this, and you will have to kind of skip backwards and forwards between these to hear the tone differences. So this is the Creamback 65M in the 2x12 open back with the SM57. Here are, there's a lot more room sound on this one, probably because the Creamback speakers having a much higher headroom can kind of punch out into that room a lot more, so on the capture they'll sound a bit more... Uh, Roomy. So if I were to use this in a kind of a, a hard pan situation, I would probably get a lot more of that kind of uh, roominess, which we'll see on the tone. Now let's move from a G12M65 to the G12H, Creamback H, with the uh, 2x12 open back again and see what difference this makes. So this is the G12 H cream back instead of the M cream back. See how that sounds a lot cleaner in the low end and a lot more present in the top end because the G12 H's were always designed to have more headroom. They've got a much larger magnet, which means that they don't saturate at the top like the G12 M does. And uh, now. Let's just try for a laugh the Vintage 30 because I don't usually use a Vintage 30 in this kind of context, but you never know. A lot of guys, especially with big 4x12s, happen to have a Vintage 30 already, so I'll show you the difference. So this is the V30. <laughs>
interesting how there's a certain uh, forwardness to that tone. So the Vintage 30 might be an option if you're, say, you're in a, a heavier band and you've got a clean section and you need to stand out. So let's just do... I've seen uh, a lot of bands that would be like someone like, say, Dream Theater Live. They used to have, say, 4x12s for the heavy sound and 2x12s for the less heavy sound. So let's go with high gain 57 plus 421 because that's kind of the rock combination on a closed back 212 because that's more like kind of the Mesa 212s that guys would use. Let's just do 212. It's a little less quote unquote clean but it really would cut through a mix quite well. And if I coil tap my pickups and then now... It's quite a nice combination. If I was to switch that 4 two, one out for a ribbon... That's got a really nice kind of fullness to it, but it's not hurting my ears. So there's plenty to be going on with for clean tones. So if you prefer a kind of softer, jazzier tone than something like a Celestian Blue or the original G12M Greenback might be your thing. Uh, the Creambacks have got a lot more clarity to them and the Vintage 30 doubly so. I mean, if you're looking for almost a clinical cold sound, then the Vintage 30 is probably where you're headed because if I try and do a jazz tone with this I'm hearing a lot of transient and a lot of attack and not a smoothness of the note that I was hearing with the uh, Alnicos so it's worth keeping in mind that it's not always one thing for one tone so hopefully this has been of use to you and we're going to go back to the studio after the uh, comparisons.
Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you found that useful. Uh, subscribe to the channel, please. That really helps us out. And uh, consider supporting us on Patreon so we can make more series like this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video where we're going to be talking about classic rock and then heavy metal.